Hi all, so in this video we will show how to compute trajectory from a two-dimensional steady or unsteady um, gridded velocity field. At this point, I assume that you're all familiar with the notebook compute velocity and that you're all familiar generally with the structures of the notebooks. So the first thing we do is we open, of course, compute trajectory notebook. So this opens notebook. Um, and let me just get rid of this. Of course, initially we have got all these import statements. These are just to make sure that we have access to all the functions which are in these folders. So we need to run the script first, of course. Then we got an overview. So in the overview, we generally introduce what's going on in this in these um, in these notebooks, and especially in the important point here is point number four. So um, this notebook specifically focuses on computing a trajectory over some finite time interval with initial condition x naught. The, we can then also define the flow map, which simply maps um, particles at point x0 to, um, to some later positions at time t. Um, we additionally need to, of course, import data. This is all known stuff from the compute um, velocity notebook. So that's, that always remains the same, basically, throughout all the notebooks in we will consider here. Um, and again, so in terms of data, we assume that we're dealing with the aviso.mat file. So again, we, are, you, we assume that we are in with that we're dealing with the aviso data. Now comes the interesting part. So now we want to compute the trajectory. Uh, for that, we need to import this function, which is integration dfdt. So what this function simply does is it takes this input, it takes the time interval. So we first need to specify the time interval over which we want to compute. Um, the the trajectory, and we specify the time interval here by specifying t naught and t n. In this case here, I'm computing the trajectory over ten days, and you also need to specify the time step size. So that's basically the resolution of the integration. Of course, the finer step size, the better and more accurate the integration. However, the more time it will take. Then we need to specify the initial condition x naught, which uh, where the first component simply is the x component and the second component simply is the y component, and both arguments are passed to um, to this function. We also need to pass some additional arguments, which are the same um, as 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 the arguments we needed to pass for computing the velocity in the previous video. Um, so these arguments are simply are the mesh uh, of the data, the interpolants and whether the flow is periodic, whether the flow is unsteady, the time were the, of the data. So that this simply specifies the time um, of um, where we know uh, the velocity field. And then the last one is simply, uh, it's called variables and uh, it simply basically plots the progress of the integration. So you can see if I run the script now, then I'm basically integrating. So I'm launching a, a pipe trajectory from X naught over this time interval. And I read, so I get basically two values returned. One is fmap and one is dfdt. So what fmap is, it's simply um, the trajectory. So if we can also type the shape of fmap. So the first dimension here specifies uh, time. The second one uh, simply the the contains the x and the y components of the, of the trajectory. And the third one is one because here we were simply integrating one trajectory. Of course, one could also integrate multiple trajectories simultaneously. That's also possible. Then one would need to specify, uh, then one would need to, to basically launch trajectory or launch multiple trajectories. Um, so this, and DFDT, what is DFDT? Well, DFDT is simply the derivative um, in time along a trajectory, which is simply the velocity. So this simply stores the velocity along a trajectory. Now, what one is generally interested is in one can plot this trajectory, for example. So if I plot this trajectory, then what I see is, okay, initially the trajectory, so that's the initial point of the trajectory, and that's the complete trajectory, where this one here is simply the longitudinal um, direction, this one here is the latitudinal direction. 